So you can know that Jesus was born, and you can know about the stories from the Bible, like the wise men, the miracles, the cross, his death, and resurrection. You may go to church regularly. You may raise your hands and sing worship songs. You may read your Bible daily. You may be able to quote scripture. You might give to the needy, and you may have been baptized at some point. All of which are very good and very important, but none of these mean you know Jesus. How can you know someone? Is it simply knowing facts about them, or is it something much deeper? I know the actor Dwayne The Rock Johnson went to the University of Miami. He wrestled in the WWE. I have even seen a bunch of his movies, but I do not know him. I only know of him. I know one of the most famous basketball players, Michael Jordan, played in the NBA and won six championships with the Chicago Bulls, and he is currently the owner of the Charlotte Hornets. I know facts of him, but I do not know him. I could also list singers whose music I have listened to and politicians who I have watched speak on TV, but I do not know any of them. Knowing facts about someone is not the same as knowing that person. Take me and my wife. When I was first told about her by my granny, I knew she was a Filipino. She was a physical therapist. And through some Facebook detective work, I found out that she was very beautiful. All of these facts were known to me before I ever met her. It was not until we started talking on the phone, meeting in person, and soon after began dating that we really started to get to know each other. We would not have now been married for almost 13 years if all we knew about each other was skin deep. Knowing someone is only achievable by spending time with them. Now let's talk about Jesus. Non-Christian sources like the Roman historian and senator Tacitus or Jewish historian Josephus affirm the historical fact that a man named Jesus was alive in Israel 2,000 years ago. So you can know that Jesus was born, and you can know about the stories from the Bible like the wise men, the miracles, the cross, his death, and resurrection. You may go to church regularly. You may raise your hands and sing worship songs. You may read your Bible daily. You may be able to quote scripture. You might give to the needy, and you may have been baptized at some point. All of which are very good and very important, but none of these mean you know Jesus. Listen carefully to the words Paul wrote. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. Knowing Jesus is having a personal relationship with him. However, a relationship with Jesus is not just about head knowledge or facts. It's about a connection with him that is deep in our hearts. It's about letting him lead, guide, convict, and even correct you. But what does the relationship with Jesus practically look like? For me, it's the times that I've been led to share my faith and talk to someone about Jesus. The times that I was led to pray with people at work. Even the times I acted foolishly, as a manager talking bad about someone's job performance to others instead of the person involved, and being convicted to go apologize to that person the next day. Or after being single for several years and sitting in church one Sunday night, griping under my breath as to why my church did not have a singles class. While sitting there griping, God spoke in my heart, why don't you start an adult singles Sunday school class? So I did. None of these I would have chosen to do on my own without God nudging me to do it. Please do not misunderstand me. Doing good things cannot save you. Only faith in Jesus can save you. To be transparent, my walk with Christ has not always been perfect and never will be. Like everyone else, I am a flawed human and will always be a work in progress. But God is amazingly merciful and so forgiving. As a father now, my biggest responsibility is making sure my children are in a position to encounter Jesus, not just by bringing them to church or teaching them Bible stories, but for them to see Jesus in me. These convictions and guidance in my heart are my reminders that I am His, especially when the enemy tries to sow seeds of doubts in my heart. So what about you? If you claim to be a Christian, is it just because you go to church? Is it because you pray? Is it because you read the Bible? Is it because you do good deeds or care about those suffering? Or is it because you walk with Him daily? Is it because you were led by Him and sacrificed your wants and desires to be obedient to Him? Again, it is worth repeating. Doing good things cannot save you. Only faith in Jesus can save you. But if you said a prayer one time and believe you were a Christian, but do not or have never had a desire or feel led to follow any of the commands of the Lord, I'm simply asking you to check your heart and pray about it. No one can judge if someone is a born-again believer in Christ, because as humans, we cannot see inside someone else's heart. 
that if you are unsure of your salvation, just ask God to reveal the answer to you. Remember, anyone can claim to be a Christian. Anyone can say they know Jesus. But do you truly know Jesus or only know about Him? Your answer to this question will determine where you will spend eternity. Dear God, help us walk out our faith in you. Lord, give us the strength to put away those things that are distracting us so that we can start praying with you daily and reading your word more consistently. Give us a heart for others that we can meet their needs, but also so we can reach those who may not know you, that through our love and the way we live our lives, they will come to know you as their Savior. Help all of us, Lord, not only know about you, but to really know you deep in our heart as our personal Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm-hmm.